Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is really one of those people that are going to take one of the biggest pain points in your business and solve it. But before we talk to our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co host. You know him, you love him, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net landmodo.com, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. If you're going to automate your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, and now knowledge is power, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration is fine. But you know what? My books are a freaking mess. They're just a mess, Scott. Why? Why? You, you, you haven't executed what I taught you in accounting for land investors? Come on, man. I, I, I took the accounting for land investors course. And you know what? I'm just, it's not that I don't understand it. It's that I don't want to do it. There you that go. I don't want to do it. But you know who does want to do it? Our guest. Loves bookkeeping. Ben Day from lionsharebookkeeping.com. Ben, if you don't know Ben Day, is the owner of Lionshare Bookkeeping. And he gives business owners back three things that you got in a business for time, money, and sanity. I'm really excited to learn what this guy is going to do and uh, to help us out because he specializes in small businesses and real estate investors from wholesalers, flippers, rentals. And let's face it, Ben Day, real estate bookkeeping is complicated. How are you? Man, I am doing well. I am so excited to nerd out about just all of the fun things that bookkeeping isn't uh, and all the things that we can get done. I'm doing well. But yeah, I mean, real estate isn't necessarily something that you can just niche down and say, oh yeah, it's just this goes here and that goes there. It's so, there's so many moving pieces that it really eats people's lunch every day. Okay, so let, let's, let's rewind the tape and tell us how in the heck did you start and why did you start lionsharebookkeeping.com? Sure. So I, um, I'm, I'll be 26 in a month. And I graduated from the University of Oklahoma with a bachelor's degree in music and a bachelor's degree in accounting. And only one of those I wanted. The other one was the uh, was um, dad saying, hey, someday I want my grandkids to eat. So would you please get something that'll get you a real job? And um, so I went and I got the music degree and I loved it. And I was working as a contractor for a music guy in town and doing a lot of really cool projects uh, locally and internationally. And, um, and then the, the funds dried up, the money dried up. He, the, the guy was really passionate and was really doing what he loved, but had no idea how his money was working. And so over really literally overnight, we lost the funding and a project that we were working on that was in the six figures turned into a project that we were doing out of somebody's garage. And it was just, it was just bad. It was just not good. And I'd been in enough businesses and seen enough of this happen uh, in, in multiple realms and multiple venues that it was like, okay, one, I really don't ever want to depend on somebody else for a paycheck ever again. If I can, I know how money works. I've got this figured out. I'm good with it. Let's start a business that helps other people do the same thing and everybody wins. And at the time I just read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, maybe like the third time or something like that. And it clicked for me. It was like, you know what? I should just become financially literate, get financially clear, find some clarity on what's happening and see if I can't help other people do the same. Um, I wanted to help people. I wanted to help microbreweries cause I'm, I'm a beer junkie. I love a good craft beer. And, um, very quickly I realized that Oklahoma city may not be the scene to break into that for, but real estate, I tell people all the time, you can go to a different real estate meetup three times a week in Oklahoma city if you're doing it right. Uh, and so it just, I got in front of people. My dad is a community bank lender. He does single family rental loans all day and he was really sick of looking at a uh, numbers off of a legal pad or a post-it note or a bar napkin and so we just sort of we got together figured out a system and we've just been helping people really leverage their money and their time and, and figure out how to pay themselves and all of that stuff for the last two years now wow fantastic so my first question is why is bookkeeping killing people's businesses oh my gosh so and here's kind of the 
especially in real estate, right? Some businesses you can just lean in and say, okay, I'm just going to go sell. I'm just going to go sell. I'm going to move my product and, and that's fine. And we just live off of a bank balance and everything is peachy. And then at the end of the year, you owe a whole bunch of taxes and you're like, oh darn, I better go sell some more so I can pay these taxes. Real estate sometimes has that luxury and sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes you can just go solve the problem by, you know, pounding the pavement. Um, but if your cash flow isn't like that, or if your cash flow, if you don't even know what your cash flow is in the first place, you're really setting yourself up for failure. So what do you do, right? You, do you go buy QuickBooks and learn how to, and basically super glue the bookkeeper hat on, uh, in addition to the handyman hat and the, and the legal assistant hat and all of this fun stuff? Or do you loop your aunt in or your sister in or your, your cousin in, somebody who wants to help, but really doesn't know what you need, doesn't know the language isn't a professional in the software, but is willing to help you out for cheap. And um, suddenly you're two years down the road and you've got this empire, but you actually have no idea what you're doing. You have no idea what your numbers say. And the person that's been doing your books has no idea how to answer those questions. And now you're sitting on this two year mess, right? And this is, this is every day for me. Like I'm helping a guy today right now, actually, who has had a different bookkeeper and accountant of both, every month's like clockwork for the last three years. Um, and it's just because they don't know what's going on and, and nobody knows what's going on. Nobody's willing to engage him, ask the hard questions and give him the help that he needs so that he can go talk to bankers and lenders and, and say, here's really what my portfolio is. And he can't go talk to investors and say, here's how our last deal performed. Do you maybe want to give me some money that we can leverage in a private money deal? Um, we're just helping him begin to kind of peel back the onion, so to speak, and really find the, the good stuff and how he can begin to grow his business. Uh, and you just can't get that without good bookkeeping. So it's like, you know, can you go sell? Sure. But bookkeeping is killing your business by keeping you in the dark. And so if you can build that part out now, suddenly the world is your oyster. If you can do all of that other stuff as well, this is just, it, like I'm too lit up about this all the time. I could ramble about this forever, but just to start without a good bookkeeping system or a good bookkeeper in your corner, you have no idea what's going on. And that is how it kills most businesses. Scott Todd. Well, um, look, the, the, the reality is, is that, you know, like in my experience is when you start to do your bookkeeping, you know, you, you, a lot of times people, they didn't go to school to become accountants or bookkeepers and they start this business. Right. And so then all of a right. sudden you have this business flowing, this, all this money's around and without knowing the the concepts, the basics, the whys behind it, what happens is you abdicate here, just take care of this stuff. And then, you know, you get these numbers at the end of the year and you're like, well, are these even right? You know, like, cause you don't understand the, the foundation or the, the, the concrete behind it. Mm. And as Ben said, if you, if you have an, a, if you have a bookkeeper that's just going through the motions, well, accounting, accounting is, is very, um, you can systemize accounting, right? Like it doesn't take, um, it doesn't take, I mean, anybody, like, like he said. Exactly, aunt, yeah. It doesn't take a genius to get the bookkeeping done. <laughs> yeah, no. But it's the knowledge behind it that's really critical. Yeah, and so, you know, it, essentially, if you, don't, if you don't have, you know, the, the foundation of the why, why this is occurring, and, you know, that's what we kind of teach in Accounting for Land Investors right there is the fact that you're making this transaction because this is the impact on it. So what we do is, you know, like when we're teaching that class, we're teaching the transaction, then we're teaching the fundamentals behind it. So we dig down into it too, so that so that everybody can understand. Oh, okay, it's this approach because now when you go sit down with your banker, or more importantly with your CPA, all of a sudden you're educating your CPA on the way to do this, and then they're like, oh, okay, I got it, no problem. And so now you're coming up to speed. But Mark, funny story, like we, you know, this last tax season that went through, 2019 tax season, it's funny because we did accounting for land investors. We gave our students the knowledge that they needed to do the one-two punch on their accountants. I can't tell you how many people came to me after they met with their accountants and said, my accountant said, I can't do this. And I'm like, here's the tax code, by the way, and here's the why behind it. Here's the accounting principles behind it. Tell, ask them why you can't do it. You know, no one came back to me. <laughs> no one <laughs> came back to me and said, my accountant says you're wrong. It doesn't happen because what happens is they're, they're so accustomed to just saying the same thing over and over again. Sometimes you have to have the foundation to say, stop, 
that's not right. Here's the reality. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So you, you really need to arm yourself with some knowledge here if you're going to run a successful business. You don't have to do it. Don't do it. But you need to understand the foundations behind it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so many people, I mean, you know, just blindly take their CPA's advice without knowing, like, no one person can completely understand the entire tax code. It's massive. So you've got to go to somebody that is a specialist in your niche. Uh, and then, you know, maybe you've got some, some good advice there. So Ben, that leads me to your next question. What's some of the worst advice you see or hear given in bookkeeping? Sure. So there's this, <laughs> and this is, this is a, this is a big spectrum, right? I mean, there's so many, like, I'm, I'm obviously not your CPA, whatever disclaimer I need to throw in here. Um, but some of the, the worst pickles I've ever seen people get into are things where the accountant just didn't know. And the investor didn't know how to talk about what they didn't know. So um, I've seen, I'm working on a set of books right now where it's a, it's a house flipper who did a whole lot of capital uh, improvements to the property, but he claimed them all last year. And now he's sold the property this year and he's setting himself up for a huge failure in, um, in, in, in taxes. He's just going to owe way more because he claimed it all in the wrong set and his cash flow is not going to match. Um, that's a, that's a big issue where unless your CPA is living with you, they're not going to know. And they're, you're, and you don't know unless you know, unless you've learned, unless you've gone through something like accounting for land investors, where it's like, Hey, some of these words are really important. And you really need to be able to say this one word in this conversation to move the needle and get what you actually want. Um, that's just on the tax side. So another really big thing for at least on kind of the rental or the cash flow side is uh, working with bankers, right? I mean, everybody, nobody wants to pay taxes, right? Everybody wants to pay exactly as much as the government needs them to pay. And then please leave me alone. I don't, I don't want to give you any more of my money, especially right now. And so everybody goes to their CPA and the knee jerk reaction is, how do I pay absolutely nothing in taxes? How do I make sure the government doesn't rob me? And some CPAs will say, okay, we can do that. And they'll jump through all of these hoops and they'll pull out all the stops and the 179 and all this fun stuff. And then they're like, okay, cool, no taxes. And they go to the bank and they can't get a loan because now there's this whole, uh, there's this whole other spectrum of financing in real estate that makes it so powerful. But if you don't, if it doesn't look like you make any money, nobody's going to give you any money. And so now there's this balancing act. And so when we begin to work with people, we're like, how can we bridge um, either in, in knowledge that we give you, or we can just be the bridge between you and your partners, your tax preparer and your banker. And, and the big mistakes are, are you calling things the right thing for your tax perspective? Are you calling them, you know, capital expenditures instead of expenses? Uh, and then it's, you know, are you, do you know what you're spending that you're not going to spend again next year? Did you have a hundred thousand dollars in rehab that makes you look like you're a horrible business owner? When in reality, that's just the name of the game and you've got this rehab and then you're going to cash flow and it's going to be great. And the, you'll flip and you'll do your CapEx to your land or your carrying costs and you'll move it and you'll make your money and we're good to go here. Um, easily two of the biggest issues that we run into consistently and is, is those two big things. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a really good point. I want to ask you when people are just starting off getting set up, is there a certain way of setting up today that you are recommending as opposed to like, let's say a one person LLC, S Corp, C Corp. So, um, and this is always fun. So whenever we kind of get into this area, um, people are asking from like a, from a protection perspective or like a, a tax shelter entity perspective, uh, the answer will always be, it depends, but I don't ever like to lead with that. What I like to lead with is do what it takes to get the deal done because you're first and foremost, a business owner, right? I mean, people are sweating, you know, how many LLCs do I need one property per like LLC or like, how do we split this up? And the truth is that if you're spending all of your time figuring out what legal entity is going to be housing, whatever deal that you're doing, you're not actually doing the deal. You're spinning your wheels. A lot of people lose valuable time or don't even ever take action because they're worried about the, the legal protection. And so while I can't officially give any guidance on that without knowing a whole lot more about you, the first thing I'll say is just do the deal. 
like just just go do do one make the money and then you can go then you can afford to go pay somebody whatever it takes uh in oklahoma it is incredibly easy to form an llc you can do it in an afternoon with a pen um or, or an email <laughs> and so it's like why like form an llc get a little professional it wouldn't be that hard and then you can just go do deals um that that is the most important thing and that's that's where we always start people with unless you're a partnership and in which case partnerships the conversation always starts the same way do you have an operating agreement and if you don't know in your heart that you're getting married to that person and you need to have a mediator get involved as early as possible and like that's otherwise you're really setting yourself up for failure so that is a, a very common question and the answer is make sure that your operating is right first yeah, I mean, speaking of setting yourself up for failure as far as bookkeeping are just the tools. So Scott Todd is a zero uh, sort of proponent. Uh -huh. Ben Day, what about you? What are you more of a proponent of as far as just getting set up the right way from day one with your software tool? Sure. So I've, uh, I've stocked accounting for land investors, Scott Todd. I've seen all of the stuff. I saw the REI tips or whatever. Uh, and I think it is an excellent program so much so that I'll say that the first tool you should use is mentorship every time get education, get training because it's not your job to reinvent the wheel. It's your job to have a wheel, right? And so by all means, go and get in an educational program where someone is gonna hold your hand, help you set that up. Um, I, when I first started, I was zero certified. I was running my practice out of that. Um, since then, we've actually moved everybody to QuickBooks Online uh, Plus, and then some people actually need the new version of QuickBooks Online, which is QuickBooks Online Advanced, which is a whole other hot button. Um, but really it's you first and foremost need to get involved in something that'll give you per property and overall business numbers. So class tracking or category tracking, I think is what it is in zero uh, is so critical. And then the next big thing that you need to realize is that if you're not going to be doing it yourself, you need a system that someone else can use. So don't like you can go use a property management software for your record keeping if you want, but now your criteria for hiring people is understands you know, Buildium understands Cozy, understands CoreCon, whatever it is. The more complex and niche that you make that, the harder it is to find a person to fit that role. So really, if you're going to pick a system, categories or classes, and someone else's system, got to be. Got it. Got it. Scott Todd. I, I always say, look, you, you got to find the, you got to find the tool, you got to find the website, you got to find whatever you, you feel like you need that's going to uh, connect with you. Sometimes zero connects with people. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes QuickBooks connects. Sometimes it doesn't. At the end of the day, I've had people tell me like, oh, I can't use zero because my accountant uses QuickBooks. I'm like, well, tell them to use zero if that's what you want. <laughs> that's like letting the tail wag the dog. It doesn't happen, right? The dog wags the tail. Like you cannot, you cannot run your business based on what your accountant uh, uses to run his business or what he likes. That's not the way that it works. And so if one's going to work for you better, great. I think that the, that the most important thing is not necessarily which application you're using, but do you understand the fundamentals as to the why and how, how to use it? Because if you don't know how to use it and you never go in there to look at your numbers, well, then you're, 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 you're not performing as a business owner because the business owner's knows his numbers. That's like rule number one of Shark Tank, isn't it? Oh my gosh. It really is. It really is. Do you know what rule number two is? What's that? Get paid on an automated basis on a set it and forget it system. You know how you do that? By Go using the sponsor of the podcast, which is geekpay.io. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash geekpay. You can start getting your down payments as easily as $9 a month and automated via ACH, $99 a month. Plus, if the ACH fails, you can have a backup on file, as many ACHs as you want, a credit card. You're going to get paid it automates the notifications. No longer do you ever have to deal with a borrower calling you up and say, what's my current balance? They can log in and see. No longer do you have to, have to take that call. Hey, can I make a prepayment this month? They can log in and do it. It's so simple and there's no note setup fees. It is the most affordable, the simplest program to get started with. Learn more at a free demo, geekpay.io and get started at thelandgeek.com forward slash geek pay. So Ben, if I wanted to learn more about just bookkeeping in general, besides going to uh, Scott Todd's accounting 
uh, for investors course. Is there a favorite book that you have on bookkeeping that you'd recommend as a reference? Sure. Just for people to get started. Um, yeah. I mean, the simple ones are best. Usually uh, the, the popular one that I use as a reference that not many people I think will reference in this context is like rich dad, poor dad. I mean, it's, what do you need? You need to get financially literate. You need to understand that there's assets and liabilities and that what you're calling them may be different than what your accountant is calling them, but here's how. Um, we also have, you know, we've got references, we've got free stuff all over the place on our website, um, that people can go check out for this. Uh, we actually just launched a free mini course all about accounting terms for, um, real estate where it's, you know, here's the weird stuff. Here's what your chart of accounts can look like. And here's why and starting just to build in that, just that little bit of content, that little thing that's going to give you the language and know what questions to ask and how to talk about stuff. But um, for people that are just getting started, go read Rich Dad eight more times and understand that, yeah, some of these words mean different things than, than what you think that they mean. And you need to get involved with somebody that can help you get to the next step. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Scott Todd. Uh, man, I don't, I didn't have a plan on this one, Mark. Let's see. I'm going to pull this one out, right? Uh, oh, oh, no, no, we're not going to the tip of the week yet. Oh, I missed I'm not it. putting you on the spot. I flaked out. What happened? I, I, I just, know. I just thought you seemed like you had something on your mind. I was worried about the tip of the week. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to guard. I'm out guard. Tell right now. Yeah. No. I'm going to give you time. Don't worry about it. And I, and I can always bail you out if you need a tip. All right, yeah. so Ben, let's just let, let's just skip to it now, should we? Yeah, sure, I'm ben, ready. I mean, he's a guest, Scott. Let's just put Ben on the spot. Go ahead. I, I, I do have one now. Now that we're talking about it, so we'll we'll hear what Ben says. All right. All right, so your tip of the week: a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Sure. So whether it's your accountant or your VA or your business partner or whoever it is, communication is always the hardest part of any business, regardless of the business type. For communication, uh, what we've started doing is using a website. You can find it at useloom.com. Uh, mm -hmm. Loom is it's a Google Chrome, Chrome, Google Chrome, there we go, plug in, uh, or I can just click play. I can record a video. It'll have my face on it. It'll have the screen on it. I can click around, show people whatever I'm talking about, talk through content, build a slide deck, whatever it is, and immediately email that and send that to people. Uh, I think that they just started a paid plan for like 10 bucks a month, but you get your first hundred videos for free. Um, I've used this to like, I think 99% of my communication now is in an email with the words that I said in the video, showing them what's going on. And then when I get feedback, it's the exact same way. So there's no more, oh, I thought you meant this. No, no, no. Click this button go here, communication problem solved. Uh, I love Loom, huge proponent of that. Go use that tool. Love it, love it. All right, Scott, tip of the week. All right, this is gonna be self-serving, Mark, but it's okay, right? Look, we just made a change, okay? The change is, is that we took posting domination and accounting for land investors. We put it under the umbrella of investor ninjas. Look, you don't have to buy it separately. Go to Investor Ninjas. It's included. Accounting for Land Investors is included on Investor Ninjas with your posting domination. Go learn how to build your, your, um, your basically your accounting system for your business. Go do it. Why not? It's there. Go check it out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know what uh, is cool? I'm going through the Zapier course right now. Automate your business with Zapier in Investor Ninjas. It's and, pretty cool, uh, right? It, it's so cool. So, I mean, I've got posting domination here. I've got WordPress 101. I've got yield, my favorite metric, crowdfunding your real estate investments, the accounting for land investors, automation, and more to come. I love it. There's a community. You what one's coming out this week. It's, it's cool. You, you, you already know this one, but it's LastPass. LastPass has come out this week. <gasps> Oh, oh, LastPass. So yeah. good. LastPass. We're going to walk you through how to use LastPass and share the stuff with your VAs. This is the, the tools that everybody needs. This is what we're talking about on Investor Ninjas. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And my wholetailing course is going to be in here. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Which, and the launch kit, I think, is coming in there. It's a big bunch of stuff in there. I got a bunch of land stuff. All right. So, Ben Day, do you want to know what my tip of the week is? I would love to know your tip of the week. It's going to be get your sanity back. It's going to be get your time back. It's going to be focus on making some money. 
Get yourself out of bookkeeping. Let the experts handle it and learn more. Go to lionshareatbookkeeping.com. Focus on working on your business and growing your business and allow the bookkeepers that are experts in it to make your life better, improve your cash flow, do some tax planning, lionshareatbookkeeping.com. I'll have a link to it. Ben Day, are we good? Man, I think that's great. I, I could talk forever, but I, I don't know if I could say anything else after that. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on the podcast. I want to remind the listeners the only way, the only way we're getting the quality of guests like a Ben Day from lionsharebookkeeping.com is if you go on the interwebs and you go on the social medias and you share the podcast, your favorite your favorite podcast episode, go ahead and share it. And then you got to subscribe. You got to rate, you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review of that review to support at the We're going to send you the $97 passive income launch kit course for free. So please do that. Scott Todd, are we good? We're great, Mark. All right. Well, let's do this. One, two, three, let freedom ring. ring. Ben's like, just, I forgot all about this until (laughs) it was like, Oh wait. Yeah. We're doing that Liberty bell stuff. Whatever it is. Liberty bell. Bell. He's like, man, are they geeky? Love it. Love it, man. All right. Well, thanks everybody. And uh, see everyone next time.